Yo, 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 what is up, y'all? It's your boy, Coop, the Super Saiyan guy, and welcome to my 2018 wrap-up of the best female WWE matches of 2018. I'll be honest, it's been a funny year for the women in the WWE, but I chose 10 matches that I thought was the shit throughout this year. I mean, we had the rise of Becky Lynch. Shayna Bales are down there in NXT. It was some pretty decent shit. So, I'm going to give you my top 10 best women's matches in WWE. And here's how it go. Make that for y'all. Number 10. Bianca Belair versus Nikki Cross on the October 17th edition of NXT. That's going to be number 10. Now, we're going to analyze both characters in this whole fucking scenario. <clears throat> Nikki Cross. The crazy maniac brawler chick. I fucking love what they've done with Nikki Cross. When I find out, it must have been about maybe two years ago. And a guy has a, had, um, replied to one of my comments on one video. Talking about, oh, WWE just had Nikki Storm. I'm like, Nikki Storm? I remember one from back in the Indies. Back in the indie, she was a little bit more of an arrogant character. They gave her this Nikki Cross persona. She's taken off with it. She is straight taken off with it. Like, it, it's, it's unfathomable that, like, how can you fuck a character up like this on the main roster? Because I heard she's coming up. Most likely to smack now. The girl can wrestle. She has a character. She has charisma. Only thing I think that might fail her is her look. And her accent. And don't get me, I love her look. Nikki Cross is not a bad looking woman. She has plump tits and big thighs. Like, she's she ain't bad looking. She ain't bad looking. I like the little sinister smile she be doing. So, and hold this whole time, we got this athletic fucking monster in Bianca Belair. I'm about to relight that. And this is someone she has never faced before. So, these two f collided the first time and ended in a draw. They got this second time in the main event of this October 17th edition of NXT. And this is around the time where the pay-per-view evolution was a big thing. And it was like, I'm looking through the car and shit. I'm like, nothing about this roster says evolution. Bianca Belair versus Nikki Cross was a definite evolution. These girls beat the hell out of each other. Like, I can't even know. We got Bianca Belair, probably one of the best athletes in the WWE. The girl is literally destined for stardom. She has the athleticism. She has the attitude. She has the look. When she get in that ring, you, you better watch the fuck out. I fucking love Bianca Belair. She is incredible. She is absolutely fucking incredible. And I only see better things happening for her as she continues to, to go through these ranks. Now, when she gets on the main roster, who knows what will happen. But I am going to enjoy the tenure and the body of work that I see they're going to put her in NXT. Hold on, let me light up. So, this was a very fun match because um, this is like Bianca Belair in the main event, Nick Cross in the main event. We're going to see some spectacular shit. So, I, I got my notes right here. So, I'm going to be going off the notes on some of this shit. So, right out the gate, <clears throat> Nikki charges at him. And, they, you know, she's giving shots to Bianca. Bianca giving him shots. They roll all the way out of the ring. And it's, it's, it's like they brawling outside. Nikki throws Bianca on the fucking steps, to the steps. And while she's doing it, she's smiling sadistically because that's her fucking character. And that shit is fucking awesome. It was a spot where um Nikki went for like a running crossbody. And Bianca catches her in midair. This, this, that's this freak of nature that we got right here. This girl's a fucking freak of nature. All strangers. Woo! Follow away, slam that ass. Dead on the dead on the ground. 
Then, um, you know, there's more back and forth. Bianca must have did like a cartwheel into a standing moonsault for a two count. It was, um, you know, I'm going to say this match was this just fucking everything I was looking for in a, in, in a match. And she must have hindered her up like did almost about to go for like a glam slam type of thing. Nikki rolls her up for another two count. Nikki um gets her to the corner, hits her with a bulldog. I think that was also for a two count. Yeah, that was also for a two count. Goes to the top rope, goes to a and goes into a crossbody while she's still smiling. Chance for both women holler, just going. You can say you can you can hit Nikki E S T like like the fans who is legit invested into this fucking match. That's I'm like yeah, cause these both of these girls are fucking amazing. It's both of these girls, and it was it was this was one of my favorite spots of the match. Um, Bianca hit Nikki Cross with a spear for a two count. Puts the latest man ahead, trying to go for another two. Nikki kicks out. Does the same thing. Nikki kicks out. Now during that third pin count, it must have been when Nikki tried to log in this maniac looking looking triangle hold or some shit. The freak of nature that is Bianca Belair gives this girl a dead lift, sit out power bomb for a near two count. Now this is what made me LOL. When Nikki Cross kicked out, the camera quickly zoomed in to Bianca's face and her facial expression of the unbelief that Nikki Cross had kicked out was fucking brilliant. It almost looked like this girl was legit about to cry because this. Because Nicki, Min um, Nicki Minaj, oh my god, what the fuck am I thinking about? Nicki Cross kicked out of that shit. And Nicki, and she kicked belt, she, it was like, it was, it was fucking great. I can't even tell you, this shit was fucking great. Bianca starts, you know, trash talking her and all that, talking about, stay down, stay down. And like, the shit, the shit was fucking really, uh, hilarious. Alright, now then it was another spot, Bianca must have said, Nikki on the on like the ropes. And I guess she was just going for a spot from there. Now Nikki Cross kind of fights back a little bit, but Bianca must have gave her once again, this is the freak of nature. This girl is a fucking freak of nature. Bianca Belair must have took Nikki Cross off the ropes. And did like a military press. Carries her from that turnbuckle to the middle of the ring. And starts bench pressing her. Saying I am the E-S-T. Nikki comes around from her back. Grabs her by the head and drops her with a reverse DDT for another fucking close two count. Now it was and then there's another spot I'm trying to think I'm looking at my notes while I'm trying to do this shit. Nikki climbs onto the same turn buckle she did before when she went for the first crossbody earlier in the match. And upon jumping, Bianca takes that hair whip and smack right her in the stomach. The crowd fucking pops like they know that she was going to get hit with that yeet. She was definitely going to get hit with that motherfucker. So then, it was, um, this is like toward the, the climax of the match. Bianca must have got on the turnbuckle. Nikki gets up and drops her with a superplex. Bianca legit looked like she was dead after that. She was just slumped over. Slumped over. We get NXT chance going. I'm like, and then the lights go out. The lights fucking go out. And lights come back on. Bianca is nowhere to be seen. Nikki Cross is on her stomach in the in the ring. Alice Black is sitting Indian style in the ring. And the fans just go crazy with holy shit chance. Nikki's got a secret chant. He must have just gave her one of these. Like, come here. Tell me. She told him. That nigga's face instantly dropped. It was a good way to end the NXT episode. But at the same time, it was a bad way because I wanted to see 
the climax of this match. I still want to see the climax of this match. If Nikki Cross is getting fucking called up, she has to finish this battle with Bianca Belair. I think that's the best way for her to go out. It's literally the best way for her to go out. Turn this loud ass PlayStation 3 off. I was about to use, try to get a picture for a thumbnail, but this shit went out again. But it was a good, because it was in the same time, it told, kept telling the story. Who did it to Alistair Black? Blah, blah, blah. But we ain't, we ain't talking about him. Overall, the match was very fucking entertaining. The crowd was into it. The crowd was into it, and it, it was, I definitely look at it as a, a, it was a fucking good match. Next, we have, um, we're going to get to our number nine spot. Our number nine spot was... The women's money in the, the second ever women's money in the bank match at the money in the bank uh, pay-per-view in Chicago, Illinois, in my city. You feel me? And I actually thought this was a fun match. I mean, you had a lot of colliding personalities in this match. You know, you had um 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 you had Naomi, Ember Moon, Sasha Banks, Natalia, Lana, and who's the other and Alexa Bliss. I put her last because she did the least amount of fucking work and won the match. And I fucking hate that about her character. Uh, that's the reason I am not an Alexa Bliss mark like the rest of you. The girl can't wrestle. She doesn't want to work. She does the least amount and gets and gets the benefit of it when you got girls on Raw that are highly more talented than her like Sasha Banks, Bayley, Ember Moon, Ruby Riot. I put an Italian even on Italian. It's kind of stale and boring, but... Overall, this was also a fun match because I wanted to see what kind of spots are they gonna have these girls do. Like, like what what are we gonna do? Like, there was um a spot I seen that was that was pretty dope where Ember Moon must have did like a springboard cross body on a Sasha Banks onto a ladder. I thought that shit was dope. I'm like, oh shit! Like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> um, then um, Lana must have dropped Ember Moon with a face buster onto the ladder. Um, it was everybody had like a pretty decent showing in this match except Alexa Bliss because she can't fucking wrestle. Other than her being the cowardly heel, waiting for opportunity, getting the briefcase. But other than that, this was not a good performance for her. Everybody else outshined her, and this is the like I kind of figured that because everybody else who was in this match was more talented to her. So there was another spot where um. Hold on, give me a second. I'm having a brain fart. Where, where um, there was a spot, I believe, on the Italian scoop slam, Lana on the ladder, and dropped Naomi into a split position on the ladder. And that same spot, Naomi rolled out the ring, like, about a few minutes later or a minute and a half later, and does, like, a springboard elbow while Natty, Charlotte, and Becky are holding the ladder. She jumps over the entire ladder and nails Natalia with it. Drop kicks the ladder while Becky and Charlotte are holding it. And I'll just say it was it was some really great shit. She gives Sasha Banks a a blockbuster off the apron, not the outside apron. Like I'm like, damn, these girls are really putting on a good fucking show. Um Ember and, and Naomi get Becky back in the ring, put her in the in the corner turnbuckle with the ladder on, and give her a double drop kick. Like I'm like, damn, this. <laughs> uh, she tossed Naomi into the corner ladder. We set up like the shit was fucking incredible. I'm like, damn, they actually they actually wrote this match pretty decently. Everybody had a good showing, showing even Lana. Even Lana, like damn, Lana had a set. I think uh, I'm gonna get to that part in a minute. I gotta go by my notes and shit. Um. Sasha must have had, you know, um, she had Lana laying on Ember Moon, laying on a ladder in the corner. You know that double knee drop that she does? She did one of them. And I thought that was a, a great spot. Ember, Ember Moon was not faced the same direction Lana was. It was like, I'm like, damn, whoever wrote this match actually deserves a pay raise in that. Like the shit was the the shit was fucking hilarious. Natalia must have had a spot where she had Sasha Banks in a power bomb position, gave her like a ricochet springboard off of the ropes while still in the power bomb position, 
and threw her into the ladder. I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, this match was actually better than the male's money in the bank ladder match. Like, this match was pretty solid. It, it was it was pretty solid. It was definitely pretty solid. Um then I remember um 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 what this happened. Charlotte must have gave Ember Moon a power bomb onto a ladder into the corner. Lana dropped um Alexa Bliss with a kick, with a nice roundhouse kick, and then applies Rusev's accolade, and the crowd popped for. Her. No key. The biggest pop of the night was for in that match was for Lana and Becky Lynch, because you know we love Becky. Becky is the man. I'm gonna say Becky's the man. Becky, of course, is going to get chance no matter where she goes. The girl's a fucking star. <laughs> In the simple, she's the star. Um, then there was another spot. Charlotte must have went through the ladder legs and speared Ember Moon into a corner ladder. Like, um, it was like damn, I'm like, Ember Moon can't catch a break in this fucking match. And Becky climbs the ladder. But it's dumped off the ladder and falls onto another ladder that's set up on the ropes. Alexa Bliss climbs the, the, the ladder and wins the match. I love the match. Hate the outcome. My, my whole book and my whole thing was like, if I wanted somebody to win this match, I was either going with one of two people. Yes, I would have loved to see Becky Lynch win it. But Becky Lynch is that fighter type. So she don't exactly need a fucking briefcase, just like Charlotte. It's more suited. It was kind of suited for Alexa Bliss because she's a heel. But I would have either went with. I was going with Ember Moon because I was like, that would be one of the most memorable cash ins you could ever fucking get. Her cashing in and hitting the clips on whoever the champion is. One, two, three, capturing the title. Something we could all viably say, like, that was some good shit. I was either going with her or Natalia. Just because. I'm like, Natalia was going to be a factor into the whole Ronda Rousey thing. You just seen last Monday, she had a championship match with Ronda Rousey. But I'm thinking, like, that's a time for the Bill Ronda phase. Like, who, who had a, whoever, who's better to feud with her on Raw than Natalia? You know, you can have Natalia win money in the bank, cat, and try to cash in on her. You know, that type of angle. Turn Natalia heel. It was like, it was, a, it was a whole bunch of different angles. Alexa Bliss winning, I was highly disappointed because she did the least amount of work in the whole fucking match. And I'm like, how can motherfuckers say she's great when she doesn't do shit? She doesn't show out. She doesn't show, she doesn't do a Sasha Banks in a fucking um, um, gauntlet match or last 50 minutes in, a, in the Royal Rumble. She does nothing to excite me to say I want to see more of her. She doesn't look like a champion. She's a coward to me. A coward to me. Like, there's other women that are that legit have characters that are suitable for a champion. Alexa Bliss's character is not suited for a fucking champion. And I don't give a fuck what anybody says about it. These are the facts. Alexa Bliss does not read champion to me. When I think of champion, I think of someone who's tough, who's not doesn't back down. Alexa Bliss have done that for a few a few times. Done nothing for me. I see Alexa Bliss, I turn my TV off. And I don't give a fuck how hot you marks think she is. And her ass is so great. Fuck that. That shit does not fucking move me. That does not move your boy at all. So we got match number eight. I'm, I'm going to go freestyle now because now I'm tired of reading off this fucking journal. So number eight, we got... Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair versus Oscar at TLC. I this match literally had a lot of controversy in it. Like I was kind of expecting my whole bet was for Charlotte to win the was Charlotte to win the title because um the whole thing I still the whole thing I was looking at Becky and Ronda still needs to happen. And that can't visibly happen with Becky being the champion. I was like, you could have kept Oscar strong without her actually losing, losing like that, and still have Charlotte. You can give Charlotte her ninth title, even though I'm like, why the fuck she has many title reigns in the first place? Not saying that she's bad, but I was just going, you know, storyline wise. You know, you, you gotta feel, you gotta feel me, you gotta feel me on this one. Check me out, check me out. So it was supposed to Becky, yeah, Becky was definitely supposed to lose this one. 
Charlotte's supposed to get that title. Becky is supposed to win the Royal Rumble, eliminating Nia Jax last, calling out Ronda. Or if in our scenario, I say, hey, with Charlotte as a champion, no matter who she fights at the next um, go-home pay-per-view before WrestleMania, I'm like, Becky wins the Royal Rumble and calls out both Charlotte and Ronda. And that way, Becky beats both of them at Mania, unifies the title the titles because it don't need to be two women's championships it doesn't you have enough women viably on both rosters to actually have something to fight for for one champion one viable champion and i'm thinking that would have been a fucking great idea you would give becky lynch her wrestlemania moment where she will never live it down unifying both the raw and women the raw and smackdown's women's championship and beating charlotte flair and ronda rousey in the same night Take my fucking money. That is something that is a WrestleMania main event worthy. That's worthy of a women's WrestleMania event. Of a women's re women's re main event for WrestleMania, I would book it like that. But who knows what's going to happen. Because this match literally just set the whole bar. This match, um, it started out, I believe, that Becky and Charlotte, they start bad-mouthing each other. Oscar's just looking like, I'm ready to kick some ass. And the... It was just so many funny spots in this match. It was a few botches. It was a few botches. But ooh, then again, it was like, we really give a fuck about botches. We don't care about botches. If 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 a botch from a bad wrestler is something we're going to talk about. Botch from somebody that's actually good, be like, hey, that's something we haven't seen. But there was a lot of kendo, sh a lot of kendo stick spots in this. Um... Oh, I'm trying to think what else the fuck. There was so much shit that happened in this fucking match. Charlotte must have applied a, a, a figure eight on Becky while the ladder is intertwined between their legs. Um, This was the spot that I legit said, holy fuck, that shit was cold. But I'm like, damn, is she all right? It's the spot where Becky has both Charlotte and Oscar on the, one of the announce tables. And she's going for a leg drop. Oscar moves out of the way. Becky's ass legit crashed into Charlotte's rib cage. I'm like, that girl is dead. It was so it was the it was so fucking hilarious to me. But this is this match legit made me say. After this, I will never say a bad thing about Charlotte again. Because I believe that Charlotte was the Roman Reigns of the women's division. She always has to be centered around the title. She has to, you know, she was the Roman Reigns' figure-ish character for the women's division. But seeing how this girl took these bumps was fucking incredible. Becky Lynch Metz gave a back exploder onto a ladder that was sitting, not a ladder, a table sitting up toward the barricade of how her head just bounced right off that bitch. Then she went from that to spearing Oscar into the barricade. I'm like, damn, this girl is fucking tough. This girl is fucking tough. So the last minute of the shit, Oscar and um, Oscar, Charlotte, uh, Oscar, uh, Charlotte and Becky are on the ladder. Ronda Rousey marches down with her mean face on and dumps the ladder over. Oscar goes up and retrieves the prize. And Oscar is your new SmackDown Women's Champion. This match was very fun to watch and I'm glad that they decided to make this interesting and make Oscar a factor into this match. Because Oscar, I'm going to be honest. I stopped caring about Oscar after they buried her using Carmella. After that, I'm like, this girl will never return to her, her glory again. But um, I don't know if someone's been paying attention or it's just the fans because the fans have been very vocal. But I think what made them say we're going to make Oscar a priority is... The pop she got when Becky Lynch got her quote-unquote face broken by Nia Jax during that invasion, which was fucking great. That made Becky look so badass. Becky Lynch is a fucking badass. But anyway, they was like, after, because Becky had to choose a replacement for her. When she went to Oscar, the crowd legit just turned up like, 
Ooh, Oscar versus Ronda. Now that was actually my whole idea for how you should you should have booked the women's champion match at Survivor Series. I was like, Oscar would have went on to beat Charlotte at WrestleMania, and hold the title all the way up to this point, almost to probably Mania itself. Oscar versus Ronda at Survivor Series. Take my fucking money. Both as champions for the respective brands. Take my fucking money. But this match was, this was probably one, this is definitely one of the, a match I can say I'm going to remember for 2018. With Ronda doing this, it literally is building the pieces to what I believe is the best women's feud that could ever happen with the four horsewomen. You start off with Becky and Charlotte with their thing with Ronda. You got, you got, um, Shafir and Jessamine Duke down there in NXT. And we got NXT, and we got women's tag team titles coming along. And I've seen that they will book certain people to go down there and work a match in NXT. When I send Sasha and Bailey to go ahead and meet them. That's the only liable way. If Becky and Charlotte are in this thing with Ronda, I can see Shayna Baszler stepping in. What does that leave Becky and what does that leave Bailey and Sasha? The deal with Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafir intertwining them all together and you have your four horse women feud and i think that feud is going to be fucking dope if did correctly did correctly you can have the most beautiful feud in women's wrestling ever something that will get the fans legit invested in it because you have four characters in each of them charlotte who you know is the pure athlete becky the girl that everybody loves Bailey, another girl that everyone loves that you want to see, and Sasha, the firecracker. This has everything to be a fucking phenomenal feud if booked correctly. Now, after WrestleMania, that's when we will see the pieces. Because hopefully they go with this angle. Let Becky win the Royal Rumble. Let Becky win the Royal Rumble. How you can somehow you're gonna Factor Charlotte into that match, regardless. You're going to do it for Charlotte. You're going to put Charlotte, Becky, and Ronda. But Becky needs to win that one. Becky needs that moment. Charlotte already has her moments. She already has her moments. Ending Oscar's undefeated streak. Becoming the first, the new inaugural women's champion after you retired to Divas Championship. Do it for Becky. Please do it for Becky. It's, it's not that hard. At whatsoever. So our next match, you might see her name come up in a few times in this. Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey at Survivor Series. I highly enjoyed this match. I would have enjoyed it more if it was Becky, just because of the fucking outcome. Directly out the mat now. Directly when the bell rings. Becky Chance start. Becky Chance instantly fucking start. Now, the thing that got me was Charlotte said she was going to do it for Becky. She's fighting for Becky. But afterwards, she said she wasn't fighting for Becky. It was just kind of some clusterfuck. Like, Does WWE not know what they wrote for this girl? Had her go out and look like a, a bimbo and say that bullshit? But this match was fucking... Hilarious, you had back and forth pen attempts. I got some notes on this too. Um, it was a spot where Charlotte must have threw Ronda face first into the bottom turnbuckle. Um, it was a, another great spot where um, Ronda tried to get like a triangle hold. And Charlotte must have reversed that into a Boston Crab. Like, I, this match I can legit watch over and over again. Um, there was another spot where where um, Charlotte does that. I no no no. I said I would never say a bad thing about Charlotte, but I'm not gonna say that's a good moon salt. Her moon salt is fucking terrible. It either overshoots and doesn't hit anybody, but it was it's it must have been a spot she tried to do a moon salt. Ronda puts her feet up. It was like this this match was just everything I could dream I could dream of it being about everybody said Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte. This this was that. This match definitely delivered for me. Ending in all. Ending in all. If I was if you was ever to book the first Charlotte and Ronda Rousey match, 
I would have booked it like this too. I definitely would have booked uh, booked at this too. Um, and then it was um, this is my favorite one of my favorite parts of the match. Charlotte hit the best spear she's ever done. Hold on, let me light up. I'm gonna say that again after I light up. Hold on, hold on, give me like two seconds. Charlotte hit the best spear she's ever done. Completely flattened Rousey for a two count. For a fucking two count. Like that, that shit was in fucking incredible. The crowd is legit turned after seeing that one. Charlotte goes for a, a figure four. And um, um, Ronda reverses into a, a reverse figure four. Both women roll out on and uh, roll out of the ring, going up toward the um, the ramp in the stage, like in that little area. Rousey throws um Charlotte through um, um at the barricade. Uh, they get back in the ring. Charlotte drops Ronda with, with a boot for the two count. Um, um. Now here's where the here's where she got real. Ronda goes for the arm bar. Charlotte, well, I'm gonna say quickly, but she made it every. She took everything in her power to get out of that arm bar. And Charlotte rolls out the ring toward to where um. The commentator's table is. The referee is counting. The runner comes from the opposite side of the ring. And Charlotte comes out with the kendo stick. We're, this is going to be a moment we're going to be talking about forever in 2018. Comes out with the kendo stick. And starts leveling her into that shit is nothing more. Like, I saw Becky Lynch... Do do this when I book this match. When I when I saw that match, I'm like, I can see Becky Lynch doing this. Uh, I I can't. And Charlotte, and I, but it, it played more into the Charlotte character. Charlotte knows how good she is. She knows what she's capable of. It was at that point in time Charlotte realized that I can't beat Ronda Rousey, but I can beat Ronda Rousey, and that's what she did. Like she legit went ham on this girl. She threw her SmackDown shirt off, threw a chair in the ring, uh, chair in the ring. The referee's trying to get it off. She started beating up the referees, and it was it was just fucking it was just fucking incredible. It was just fucking incredible. She beats up all the referees, hits a natural selection on Ronda on the fucking chair, and then put the chair around her neck and stomped on it. Legit, you could see blood just gushing out of wine out of Ronda's mouth. The fans are going fucking nuts. The fans are going fucking nuts. Like we're getting thank you Charlotte chants. Then we get some Becky chants. As Ronda is walking away, she's looking so disappointed, so defeated. I could have swear a few fans was even chanting, "You deserve it." This legit led up to the events that happened at TLC. To Ronda coming out and pushing. She said, fuck both of y'all. She said, fuck Becky. Because Becky whooped her ass prior to Survivor Series with a chair and the arm bar. I swear to God, Becky, I never legit had that much of a hard on for Becky Lynch until that night. I'm like, and seeing her with that blood all over her face and her shower, her, she playing it off. I'm like, Becky is a fucking badass. She's a badass. And I'm like, and I love how they, they've done with this character. And no, goon, she's not a fucking heel. Heel shit on fans. Becky Lynch is not shit on the fans. She just said, fuck everybody. I'm the best at what I do. I deserve to be champion. And we as the fans, we are, and we solely agree. I agree with, I, I, I agree with that. Now, I think the same result would have came out if Becky was in the match, but it would have looked better. It would have looked so much better. Oh, um, shit, that's the wrong page. Hold on, give me a second. While we get time. So that was, um, help me out here. We're on 30 minute mark. So that was 
the number seven match. Or was that number six? That was number six, my bad. That was number six. Now we get into my number five match. Number five. Or did I skip one? I think I skipped one. I don't care. I really don't. I re I don't think we care. Well, I think yeah, I think I skipped one. Yeah, I skipped one. But this is another one of my favorite women's matches of the year. Charlotte versus Asuka at WrestleMania. Now this had the all the right build to it. Charlotte came out and cut a promo. And she presented herself as a champion. Something Alexa Bliss doesn't do. Charlotte presented herself like, Oscar, I wanted you to pick me. I wanted you to because I've watched you. I've never faced anyone like you, but you have never faced anyone like me. And it had that big fight feel to it. I'm like, that is the only time I was like, Charlotte has a baby face. I can see her being portrayed as a dominant champion. And that's what she did. Now, this match, I don't agree with the results. I think Oscar should have won this. But the match itself was pretty fun. The match itself, had, the match itself was pretty decent. I wish the uh, the only thing is like the only thing I say about this match. I wish they would have let them go, maybe another ten minutes. Should have let them go another ten minutes. Now the thing that made me laugh about this match was how a Charlotte came out being escorted by fucking gladiators, by Achilles and his brother or some shit. <laughs> Like I'm like, God damn. <laughs> Started with some 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 decent mat wrestling. Um uh, I think it was a spot where where it was a spot where Oscar no was about to get hit with that moonsault. Same moonsault we keep talking about that Charlotte keeps doing. And Oscar reverses that into a triangle hole. And then Charlotte reverses that into a Boston Crab. Um, um, it was another spot. Oscar must have suplexed her off the apron onto the um, the the matted floor. Um, she was throwing out multiple strikes out there in a corner. Hits a top rope drop kick on for a two count. Um, now here's the spot I would have switched it up, cause I don't agree with how this match ended. You could have still put the title, like, Charlotte being Oscar at WrestleMania did absolutely nothing. If your whole plan was to put the belt on Carmella due to a cash-in, it should have been at this spot right here. Where Charlotte hit the Spanish fly, off the, the avalanche Spanish fly, off the top rope onto Oscar for a two count. It should have been, I would have put it like this, have Oscar roll out of the ring, have Carmella come out of the crowd, Crack Charlotte, do the whole cash in. Charlotte stands up, catches that kick. Oscar still being down from the Spanish fly. Carmella, one, two, three, gets to the SmackDown Women's Championship. Oscar still remains undefeated. But no, they didn't do it like that. They did not do it like that. Oscar gets dropped with a spear. Charlotte applies the figure eight. Oscar taps out. Charlotte def the defeats Oscar and remains SmackDown Women's Champion. Good match. Ten minutes more could have been a way better match. Creative booking could have had a whole little plot on there. Cause I, I why would you why did you have to defeat why did you have to put a loss on Oscar's record if you were the whole plan was that Thursday after was to put the title on Carmelo. Makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. It definitely makes no sense. See, I don't even know why I'm mad anymore. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Um, Y'all gotta help me out here. I'm, I'm, I don't even know what. What I'm thinking. I'm at number five, four. Somewhere I don't know. Somewhere in that. But um, I think my, my number five. 
Number five, I believe, um, my number five women's match of 2018 will have to be, man, it was some fucking decent matches. I have to literally sit down and think about this. I'm going to say Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler at Evolution. Now, out of Becky and Charlotte, Kyrie and and Shayna, it's been a a female feud I've been heavily invested into because they've legit been telling an entire story coming out of the 2017 May Young Classic. Kyrie beat Shayna in the finals. Shayna comes out, attacks Kyrie, chokes her out, gets a win on her on an NXT television. Kyrie finally beats her at Brooklyn Four. In a heartfelt, it was a when I believe that everyone who's a legit Kyrie Sane fan legit wanted to cry when they seen this girl finally win the title. It, it was a, a truly beautiful thing. It was a truly beautiful thing, and how happy she looks. She's carrying around this treasure chest with the treasure, the NXT Women's Championship, and that's why I like this. The story is centered around Shayna Baszler plays the perfect bully. They tried to book Alexa Bliss being a bully to Nia Jax. That shit made no sense at all. That shit made no sense at all. Nia Jax is 270 pounds and will crush Alexa Bliss without trying. And I'm not a, a high Nia Jax fan, but it just it, make it make sense. I'm sorry, make it make sense. So, this is at the first ever women's pay-per-view. And I thought this was one of their best, if not their best encounter to date. We have a Kyrie Sane a year after the May Young Classic and a Shayna Baszler a year after the May Young Classic. At the first ever women's pay-per-view, you know they were ready to bring the heat. Very, 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 very physical match. I don't have any notes on this. I'm going by what I can see in my fucking head. I think probably my favorite spot um... My favorite spot was when, like, Shayna Baszler was, had this reverse arm lock on Kyrie Sane, hoisting her in the air off the turnbuckle. This tiny little five foot one Japanese girl just being dangling in the air. And the, um, the, the, the finish was kind of, was, was heartbreaking. And the, and the, because, um, she once came outside and I think, uh, I want to say that was Marina Shafir. No, that was Jessamyn Duke that kicked Kyrie in the face outside of the ring. And Shayna locks in. I was about to call it the Coquina Clutch, but I don't give a fuck. The sleeper hold. And that's what put Kyrie down. That's what put Kyrie down. At the same time, at the same time, I wasn't disappointed at the fucking um, results. But I was like, because I was too intrigued by the match. The match was fucking great. Even though um, it was a spot where Kyrie saying I did a crossbody off the top ropes to the outside of Shayna Baszler. And Shayna Baszler did a whole no sell on it. But I'm not, I'm not going to take any credibility away from Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler, she's still a little green in the ring. But her character, her mic skills are great. I can, Shayna Baszler is a believable champion because she's a legit badass when it comes down to it like that's the things and i was like hey shana baszler i can see things happening for her on the main roster and i believe she will be on the smackdown side when they're trying to build this whole four horsewomen feud up you feel me but either way go this was a fucking fantastic match Another match, I wish it could have went longer along with Tony Storm and Io Shirai there. But I don't know, any NXT credibility matches were automatically get watered down so they don't take the thunder from Ronda and Nikki, which was a fucking terrible match. I'm like, uh, and, um, yeah. So, I already knew they wasn't going to take no thunder from Becky and Charlotte. But, anyway, we ain't, ain't going to talk about that one right now. So, next match. Sasha Banks versus Asuka on the... January 29th edition of Monday Night Raw. This is our first time ever seeing 
Sasha Banks and Bay and Bailey and Oscar in a one on one match. Now a lot of people keep saying a lot of bad shit about Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks is fucking great. She brings a best match out of everybody. And this was one of her best singles performances throughout the year. Despite the fact her accolades go back with the Women's Royal Rumble. With the um, first ever Women's Elimination Chamber. That gauntlet match. Sasha Banks is the fucking truth. You don't need a championship to establish your greatness. Sasha Banks is great because of that in-ring work. The in-ring work that... Which she does. Now, yes, there was a botch there where it was when she went for a suicide dive and Oscar was supposed to kick her and the girl fell all on her fucking neck. But overall, I think they let these women go for about maybe seven, 15 to 17 minutes. I'm like, this is what I, uh, it's like, this is definitely what I expect of a Sasha versus Oscar, uh, Sasha Banks versus Oscar match. It definitely delivered for me. It was a great fucking match. In the end, Oscar gets the win with the tap out, with the Oscar lock. But I was definitely, I would ever say, I think that was the, the no, I'm not going to say I don't think. That was the best women's match on Monday Night Raw all this year. There's not a single women's match on any Monday Night Raw that matches to this one. Remember that date, January 28th. 2000, 29th, 2018, Sasha versus, uh, Sasha Banks versus Oscar, best women's match on Monday Night Raw, that match, it was very great, because we, because that just showed how great Sasha Banks was, Sasha Banks was legit, before, uh, well, before, the only person I can think on the main roster that actually, that actually beat Oscar, she made it convincible, she made it convincible, and, I wouldn't mind seeing these two lock up again. The match was fucking dope. It was dope as shit. Next, we got... This is number three. We got Kyrie Sane or Shayna Baszler at War Games 2 in a two out of three falls match. Give me two seconds, because this match... <laughs> So we got Shayna Baszler and Kyrie Sane at War Games. The thing that made me like this match was the build. I remember they must have showed the first little promo package to it. And this is where viably you can see Kyrie Sane is a people's champion type character. She opened her treasure chest and she like, it's gone. I'm like, I feel so bad for this girl right now. I really do. And I actually wanted to see Kyrie get this back at War Games. But it didn't happen that way. But this match was definitely one of the best women's matches of the year. This is why I put this at number three. Right out the gate, this little fireball and, and Kyrie Sane going off hitting her with neck breakers and forearms and it was just so much shit in there. It was man. Now I think for the first fall, it was it was um one of the horsewomen that that got interfered and Shayna Baszler must have locked in the um the sleeper hole and gets the first tap. Um, they continue to go at it. I, yeah, they continue to go at it. Um, I believe Kyrie got the second fall with the the drop, the anchor elbow of death. I don't like the end name, the insane elbow. I'll be honest, WWE, y'all need to change that fucking name of that move. I'll, elbow drop of doom. Or I like drop the anchor because she's a pirate and the anchor does literally just do 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 doom. So I'm like, okay. But yeah, so here's how the third fall happens. No, but don't even say how the third fall happens. The the other two horsewomen they interfere again. Dakota Kai shows up. Dakota Kai shows up and you know they start brawling outside. Io Shirai comes out and does this beautiful and I mean picture perfect fucking beautiful ice SIE moonsault off of the turnbuckle. I legit turned up for that. 
Now, how the match climaxed? Kyrie must have went up for the elbow. Shayna Baszler, excuse me. <sighs> Shayna Baszler must have grabbed, locked her arm, and rolled her up one, two, three. But the only controversy is Kyrie's left shoulder was up when that three count hit. And they even said that in one of the backstage interviews that her shoulder was up. But who the how that tells? I don't know. Will Kyrie get a rematch and they actually analyze this? Like, okay, on this, on Monday Night Raw, they said they were abolishing the rematch clause. So does that also apply for NXT? I don't know. I do not know. But either way, I hope this is not the climax of their rivalry. Like I said, this has been the best rivalry in the women's division in WWE next to Becky and Charlotte. And I was just highly intrigued about what these these women were doing. These the whole story was I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. No, you're in Kyrie's. Well, the Kyrie's not tough enough. She's not good enough. Uh, she, and she just she turned up. She turned up. I love Kyrie saying I think she's fucking awesome. I was watching her back in Japan when she was Kyrie Hojo, and I've seen a few matches with Shayna Baszler and and her indie pair. She's more of a character than a wrestler. It's like this. It's like this. Um, Ronda Rousey is better in the ring than Shayna Baszler, but Shayna Baszler is a better overall character. But I I love this match. I love this match too. This this match was fucking great. Now number two, number two, you did Mako Satomura versus Mercedes Martinez at the Mae Young Classic. If you did not watch that match. You don't know what women's wrestling is. This match was fucking brilliant. Or how you're going to bring the 15-year veteran to a well-respected legend. Together, it was fucking great. Mako dropping her ass with all types of kicks. And, and it was just a dope match. I can't even further describe how awesome this match was this match was fucking brilliant from beginning to end we even got this is awesome chance and all that Mako Satomura wins with the um what did she hit her with that step up kick or the the uh, the, the death valley drop I don't, I don't want to say she hit her with a step up kick but I can't this is a match I want to even spoil for you and do review on it Go back and watch that match. That is literally the best match in the May Young Classic this year. Mako Sadamore versus Mercedes Martinez. Match one hard. Give me, give me, give me a quick second. Okay, I'll be back. Yeah, so now we're going to get into number one females match of 2018. That's probably the what it is. If not, <laughs> spoiler alert, <laughs> we got Becky Lynch versus Charlotte in the last woman standing match for the SmackDown Women's Championship at Evolution in the main event. This match is fucking great. God damn it, hold on. <laughs>
So yeah, Becky Lynch versus Charlotte in the last woman standing match at Evolution. This match was fucking hilarious. Like, even with the botches. It had a few botches in it, but I couldn't take anything away from these women. This is where Becky was legit the man. Becky was the man. And she proved that one. The kendo spot. This, this was the first time we seen Becky Lynch leg drop Charlotte through a table. <laughs> like this shit was this match was fucking cold. It was a bot my bot a legit laugh when Charlotte must have went for the moonsault while Becky Lynch was on the table. The table didn't break. So she went got back up and did a sent time through it. <laughs> This match was fucking hilarious, but I was in invested into the match because I'm like, these two characters is new. I don't give a fuck. I know I'm the shit, and I deserve this shit. Becky Lynch versus a babyface Charlotte, which wasn't gonna a babyface Charlotte, which wasn't gonna get. I'm like, if they, it probably would have worked better if Charlotte was a heel, but it doesn't matter. This match was fucking hilarious from beginning to end. If this match was covered by Fox Sports itself, it even shows them. And Becky Lynch gets the win with a apron power bomb, a, a botched apron power bomb to Charlotte off of the table, uh, through a table. Charlotte stayed down from the tent. Now, here's I'm gonna give you this analysis of both Becky, uh, of really just Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch, and a lot of people said this new Becky Lynch, oh, she was a great heel. No, Becky Lynch is not a fucking heel. She does not shit on the fans. She does not do dastardly things. She's just fed up with time to be a hell back. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We all know what the girl can do. We know that she's better than half of the women on this roster. How the fuck is she a heel? How the fuck is she a heel? The fan, she will not, you will, it will never be a point in time where the fans are going to turn on Becky Lynch and boo her. A real heel gets booed. Point blank, period. Becky Lynch ain't receiving no boos from nobody. They love Becky Lynch. I love Becky Lynch. I can't wait to see what she does in 2019. Becky Lynch, Charlotte. Last woman standing match at Evolution. That is, that was the best women's match of the year. I do have a few honorable mentions that were pretty decent. Like, um, Nia Jackson, Ronda Rousey was pretty solid at TLC. That was solid. Um, Hiroyo Matsumoto and Rachel Elring in the Mae Young Classic. Hard hitting match. Very hard hitting match. I didn't know the. F I did not know f uh, for, uh, this really made me realize. Like, damn, this Rachel Evans is actually pretty good. She's actually a pretty good wrestler, and I like her character. I also put Tony Storm and um and Shayna Baszler at the first NXT UK. Tony Storm can tell a damn good story in the ring with her character, and her mannerisms, her facial expressions. And, and Tony Storm is badass, and I really look hope. I wish she wasn't just leveled to just appearing on NXT UK. I believe that she will, would be a top contender for the NXT Women's Championship. I would love to see a Tony Storm versus a Bianca Belair, and Bianca Belair, and Bianca Belair. Right now, I'm I am literally stoked right now that she's getting her first takeover match. On the card, you know, because I remember she had a match against Dakota Kai in Chicago doing when they was doing the film for Chicago too. But that was like a pre pre match thing. But the, she's actually on the card and, and taking on Shayna Baszler. So the thing is, I want to see how is it that they build this match. I'm gonna also give you a little quick insight on what I think should happen for the women's division in 2019. So, but we're gonna stick to this topic. So we got. Bianca Belair versus Shayna Baszler. Do you turn Bianca Belair to a, a baby face? 
Is that how they're going to build this whole thing? And the question is, how do they book this match? Do you book B Bianca B Belair to be undefeated and win the NXT Women's Championship from Shayna Baszler? Or do you solidify Shayna Baszler's badassery by handing Bianca Belair her first singles loss? Now, Lacey Evans and Nikki Cross are coming up to the main roster. Lacey Evans most likely is going to be on Raw. Well, I think she do well. I think she just might do well because, hey, look at the accolades. All-American Army girl, blonde, tall, good-looking, with nice physique. She has all. She has everything she needs to make Vince McMahon cream his pants. Will she do? Will she be? She's her character will definitely be recognizable in the women's division. But as far as elevating it, I don't really see it until they see how she's booked. As long as she ain't overly forced, it may just seem like she can beat anybody. Don't get me wrong, Lacey Evans is not bad in the ring, I, and I actually like the little pinup girl character. But this is Monday Night Raw, we talking about, and we know how Monday Night Raw has failed their women's division. All together. For NXT. For NXT. I hear that there are. We, like I said. We got a whole new generation of women. Now. We getting all the good indie women now. In NXT. So. If you are to take the belt off of Shayna Baszler. And put on Bianca Belair. That means she has to go through all these. These cold indie girls that we got now. I mean because look. We got Mia Yim. We got um, well, um, we got Io Shirai, who I know is gonna be an NXT Women's Champion. We got um Lacey Lane, who I'm still waiting for her to make her NXT televised debut. Um, who else we got? You got MJ Jenkins. It's you legit have some women on this roster to put as a to, to actually start building up now. I mean, because right now, I mean, you got your 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 top tier players in Shayna Baszler, Bianca Belair, Io Shirai, Kyrie Sane, Nikki Cross getting called up, so she ain't can't even be in that category anymore. And um, yeah, it's it's time to start grooming some of these new girls. Uh, you got Candice LeRae out there. And I, I actually believe she would be a more believable person, especially as a baby face, up to the point where I thought Johnny Gargano didn't attack Aleister Black as a character that could beat Shayna Baszler because I think it was at a point in time where they missed they both to, to book Kyrie as champion. I was like, Candice LeRae, I can see beating Candice, uh, Candice LeRae, I can see beating Shayna Baszler. But I don't know what they're going to do with that now. They might make her a high contender if they continue to book Bianca as a heel. I'd definitely like to see her and, and Candice LeRae like a Dakota Kai on the come up. You know, we got some legit women. Deanna Perrazzo. We, I heard they're, they're, they're trying to get Karen Q. I love Karen Q. The woman's smile is incredible to me. And and I, and I like her, her in-ring work. I like getting Karen Q and Deanna Perrazzo back in the same company. And to me, they're their best rivals. They had an indie match that was like 30 minutes long, and it told a great story. Out of both Deanna Perrazzo and Karen Q, that's definitely a feud I would like to see WWE, how WWE would book. Because they've already done that in Ring of Honor and, and countless the numbers of indie promotion matches. Deanna Perrazzo and Karen Q, yes. And I, and I'm fucking crazy about Deanna Perrazzo. She's, she's young. She has, she has charisma, elegance, and you know the girl can go. That's the whole thing. And she's been on television a few times on WWE. She was James Ellsworth during that horrible SmackDown Women's Championship reign of Alexa Bliss. And I was like, oh, God. Deanna Perrazzo, this was resorted to. Like, they keep making jobbers out of actual good wrestlers but I just say hey we're finally gonna sign Deanna Perrazzo now this is the thing I wanna know y'all need to bring in some more chicks there's a lot more chicks y'all missed y'all y'all chance with Tessa Blanchett y'all missed that one and I think that could have been a great one for you 
You still have um, um, Priscilla Kelly out there. I'm, I'm surprised you don't sign her. Her, I don't know how you would tone. You probably have to tone it. Well, WWE stands would tone out her character because she's a slight sexual character. Like she'll bite the ass. I remember she bit Jordan Grace's ass, and I thought that was fucking dope. She puts her legs all up on the referee. Like she's a sexual character, but I like. I, but I like her. She's cool. Priscilla, and I think she's young, too. So she's only going to get better as it goes. Santana Garrett. Why well, haven't the fuck has they signed Santana Garrett? She has everything to be a marketable baby face in the women's division. Because she legit looks like a fucking superhero. But she's gorgeous with the, a headband and a cape and a colorful outfit. Santana Garrett should have been signed with the WWE. She should have been signed with them. So, as far as the women's division, if I if I know this is correct, they're coming out with a women's tag team division. That makes me cringe altogether because you can't get the women's division right, nor the tag team division right. What makes you think you can do both? You got a women's tag team division. Does that mean we have to go through more fucking Bailey and Sasha with versus the Riot Squad? Like... We're going to get those same repetitive matches unless you actually plan on putting, putting these titles throughout all three brands. And that's what I'm saying. These titles, if done right, the women's tag team titles can be a very, very, what's the word, valuable piece in that four horsewomen feud. What if Jessamine Duke and um, Marina Shafir get those titles? Would you not start the Sasha and Bay Sasha and Bay versus them few? Like it's a lot of things you could do with this. It's, it's a lot. It's about creativity. But other than that, like I said, it was some really good women's matches this year in WWE. Um, as far as more women's wrestling go, right now, like I said, um, I give Women's Wrestler of the Year to both Tessa Blanchard and Becky Lynch. Because it was the year Becky became the man. And Tessa Blanchard has been having a fucking phenomenal year in Impact Wrestling. They are booking her to where it legit looks like she's the shit. Tessa Blanchard is the shit. And no one, nobody can beat her. No one can beat her. And that's why I like, I love, and I love her character. She's a professional wrestler. She don't look like a model. She's even built like a professional wrestler. Uh, built like a professional wrestler. Like the girl's body is insane. I love. I fucking love Tessa Blanchard. She had won that Fatal Four Way match in All In. Has been the Knockouts Champion. Who can stop Tessa Blanchard? Now she has a match against Taya Valkyrie coming up with Gail Kim as a special guest referee. I would say if a plot, if I want to do a plot twist, what if Gail Kim turns on and attacks Taya Valkyrie and gives and gives Tessa Blanchard the win. Say, I did that because I see the future of the knockouts division. I see someone who's going to be like me one now a day. I, w I will probably book it like that. Now, I was like, one thing about knockouts um, in, um, division, I actually like them because not only is it centered around the championship, it gives the women things to do. You got this Allie feud with her, this alliance with her and Sue Young. Allie's now a member of the Dawson, has turned on, on, on Kiara Hogan. Everyone's saying Rosemary's the only one that can that can that can, that can do something about. That's true, and all we have to do is wait patiently. The High Queen shall return. But I'm glad y'all got to tune into this one with me for my top ten WWE women's matches of 2018. Um, it's like three in the morning now. I am going to bed. But when I get up, or if I don't go to work, you will get my overall top 10 matches in WWE. None. None of the women's matches will be in this list, because that's why I made a women's list. But anyway, y'all be smooth. It's your boy, Coop the Saiyan. It's Coop, not Coop the Super Saiyan guy. We're going to hit y'all one more time before 2019. Yeah, come here. We outie, body.